Hello everyone, welcome to All in Europe Day Education. My name is Manish Singh and today I am going to discuss with you a descriptive question paper of uh, examiner of patent and design, correct? And this is question paper from uh, 2015 and uh, this is a descriptive question paper then you can see here in this question paper especially I am in this, in this session I am going to discuss with you one question, descriptive question, how to solve this question and what is the procedure to write any subjective problem, yes or no, so that you can get maximum marks, is it clear? So this is a question paper from mains exam. So let's see uh, what is the pattern of this paper first and after that I will uh, solve one question paper, uh, sorry one question, not one question paper, one question from this paper, correct? So you can see here this paper contained four sections section 1 a b c and d and each sections are having each sections are having three questions you can see here each sections are having three question and the weightage of each question is equal that is 12 marks of each questions and the total weightage is 36 marks and similarly now you can see section b again here we see three questions in this section and uh, each questions having 20 marks the total marks for this section is 60 and next you can see section C uh, this is also contains three question and each questions are having you can see each questions are having uh, 28 marks and the total weightage of this question is 84 and now you can see section D correct so it uh, it also contains three question and the weightage of each question is 40 marks and the total weightage is 120 yes or no so the total question paper belongs to 300 marks and the time for this question paper is isko solve karne ke liye hamare paas kitna time hai only 3 hours so it is impossible to solve each questions in this duration yes or no it is impossible so what is the strategy you should follow for uh, appearing in this exam yes or no correct so you can see here while uh, giving this exam, you must first read all the question paper from question 1 to last question in each section, correct? And mark those questions which can be solved in single attempt at very less time, yes or no, correct? So, if you look at the thoroughly question paper, you will have an idea that which question can be solved in a very less short uh, time period, yes or no? Because that you start solving from question number 1, and you stuck some question then uh, at the end you re uh, aap pahunchi nahi paoge aur kai sare easy question aap easily wahan pe chhod jaoge correct so it's better to uh, read uh, complete question paper thoroughly correct and after that you just mark uh, each questions correct each questions correct aur uske baad aap mark karne ke baad unko mention kar lo ki isko solve karna and you can see here in this we have four sections correct in this we have four sections and the weightage of each section is different so accordingly according to these weightage you you should uh, give a time correct time frame yes or no aisa nahi ki ek chhota question hai let's see if i talk about section a then har ek question ka weightage kitna hai only 12 marks and if you put more time for solving this question then definitely you lose the score yes or no to aapko karna kya hai ki har section ke according time frame dena hai you, you can see here, here we have four uh, sections and the last section we have three question and 40 marks of each questions, correct? Three question and 40 marks of each questions. So obviously you should pay more time on this, yes or no? And out of these three question, if you are able to solve at least two question, then this is enough, yes or no? And after that, after and obviously for solving these two questions, you need around one hour time. Correct? You need one hour time for solving these two questions. 30 minutes for one question, 30 minutes for another question. Yes or no? And similarly, when you move to the section C, then you can see the weightage of this section. Then you can see weightage for each question. That is 20 marks. Yes or no? So you also, uh, here you have target for now. At least you solve two questions from this section. Is it clear? And two questions are uh, having how much? Uh, 
इधर यू कैन सॉल्व एंटायरली टू क्वेश्चंस कंप्लीट हर सेक्शन उसके सॉल्व हो जाए या फिर दो क्वेश्चन या तीनों क्वेश्चन में ऐसे सॉल्व करो कि एटलीस्ट ट्वेंटी फोर मार्क्स में अराउंड फिफ्टी टू सिक्सटी मार्क्स का प्रॉब्लम आप इजीली सॉल्व कर सको नेसेसरी नहीं है यू सॉल्व ऑल द सेक्शन ऑफ ईच क्वेश्चन ये सर नो हर को सेक्शन में कुछ कुछ पार्ट्स होंगे हो सकता है कोई सा भी पार्ट आप मिस कर रहे हो आपसे नहीं आ रहा उसको आप लीव करो इमीडिएटली छोड़ दो नेक्स्ट पार्ट में मूव कर जाओ ये सर नो आपका टारगेट होना चाहिए अप्रॉक्सीमेटली आउट ऑफ एट्टी फोर अप्रॉक्सीमेटली फिफ्टीन मार्क्स का क्वेश्चन आपको एनी हाउ सॉल्व करना है एट्टी मार्क्स का क्वेश्चन यहाँ पे एनी हाउ सॉल्व करना है एटलीस्ट टू सेक्शन और टोटल तीनों क्वेश्चन मिला के फोर्टी एटी मार्क्स करेक्ट एंड सिमिलरली यू कैन सी हियर वी हैव सिक्सटी मार्क्स देन हियर यू ऑल्सो ट्राई टू सॉल्व these uh, in, uh, the questions in such a way that you must uh, contain uh, obtain around 40 marks correct and similarly here uh, around 20 20 plus marks yes or no so this is enough for uh, cracking any exam uh, cracking of this exam yes or no the total number is 8 uh, 130 170 and around uh, 190 200 approximately 200 marks correct सो वन हंड्रेड नाइन्टी दिस इज इनफ इससे ज्यादा सॉल्व हो भी नहीं सकता इज इट क्लियर सो नाउ यू कैन सी इफ आई टॉक अबाउट द क्वेश्चन पेपर देन यू कैन सी हियर यू कैन सी द क्वेश्चन पेपर दिस इज सेक्शन वन ऑब्वियसली दिस इज फ्रॉम आईसी इंजन सो आई एम नॉट Discussing each and every question, so you let's just see one question, जिसको मैं यहाँ पे solve कराने वाला हूँ. Now you can see this is the question. Correct, this is the question. And the weightage of this question is twenty marks. Correct. So you can see here how to solve how to solve this problem. Correct. So. सो यू कैन सी इन दिस वी हैव वेरी मतलब ये क्वेश्चन देख के आपको डरना नहीं है कि क्वेश्चन बड़ा भारी सा दिख रहा है एंड हाउ टू सॉल्व इट इज इम्पॉसिबल टू सॉल्व इट ये सानो सो यू जस्ट सी हियर इन दिस क्वेश्चन इट इज मैंशन हियर अल एल सेफ्ड रॉड एंड यू कैन सी द वेट ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन इज ट्वेंटी मार्क्स एंड आई एम टेलिंग यू हाउ टू ऑप्टेन ट्वेंटी मार्क्स वेरी इजिली सो एल सेफ्ड रॉड ए बी सी यू कैन सी हियर दिस इज एल सेफ्ड रॉड ए बी सी ऑफ सॉलिड सर्कुलर क्रॉस सेक्शन लाइज इन अरिजेंटल प्लेन it's one end is fixed you can see here this end is fixed and uh, another end is free that is c as shown in figure uh, 12b correct so you can see in this figure one end is fixed and this end is free that is c end the diameter of the rod you can see first right while solving con uh, conventional problem you just see you just you should follow these rules while uh, while reading this question you always write what are the things given in this question so given to first you write given to what are the things mentioned in this question you just write it so the diameter of this rod is given here this is nothing but this is equal to diameter of the rod is nothing but this is 60 mm and after that a wire rope hang freely from the end free end c you can see here a wire rope is hanged here and the rope may be assumed you can see the rope may be assumed vertical inextensible and massless means this is a rigid bar which has uh, which which does not have any mass yes or no or ye expand nahi ho sakti and a person of mass 60 kg you can see here ek person hai a person of mass 60 kg 60 kg he starts climbing up Uh, of the rope with acceleration of 2 meter per second square so as mass of the person mass of the person let's say m this is given which is equal to 10 kg uh, 60 kg and the acceleration through which uh, he climbs is 2 meter per second square correct find the maximum stress as the position xy so we need to find out we need to find out stress we need to find out stress somewhere here you can see here we need to find out stress somewhere here yes or no and you can see this is our x axis and this one is our y axis it is mentioned here find the maximum stress so you just write here find to after that after writing given data you just write find to aapko kya pata karna you also write 
find 2 and uh, here we need to find out the find the maximum stress at position x and y at the root. Correct? At the location, find the maximum stress at a position x, y at the root that is at the location where the rod connected with the wall. Means fixed end mein aapko kya karna hai? You simply you just find out maximum stress, maximum stress at the fixed point. And maximum stress kya ho sakti? It may be, maximum stress is mentioned here. यहाँ पे ऐसा नहीं लिखा कि नॉर्मल स्ट्रेस पता करना है सीयर स्ट्रेस पता करना है सो लेट्स यू फाइंड आउट बोथ मैक्सिमम नॉर्मल स्ट्रेस एंड मैक्सिमम दिस इज मैक्सिमम सीयर स्ट्रेस एंड यू आल्सो फाइंड आउट मैक्सिमम सीयर स्ट्रेस विथ अ यूनिट दैट इज मेगा पास्कल ये साथ हूँ सो दिस इज द क्वेश्चन करेक्ट तो आपने सबसे पहले क्या लिखा कि आपको क्या डेटा दिया हुआ है एंड आफ्टर दैट वॉट यू नीड टू फाइंड आउट क्लियरली पहले से आप मैंशन कर दो एंड नाउ हाउ टू सॉल्व दिस क्वेश्चन so if i draw its free body diagram then can i say it is looking like this it is looking like this yes or no sorry this is a diagram is correct you you just say like this uh this is wall perpendicular to this we have a rod like this yes or no correct and here we have a rope which is hang with this at the free end this is a rope and let's say let's here we assume here we have some mass which is climbing which is climbing with acceleration is equal to 2 meter per second square yes or no along this direction then obviously you can see here and this distance is given here this is 3 meter and this distance is nothing but this is a 2 meter yes or no and similarly if I talk about their axis and this is 2 meter okay so now you can see here if i talk about axis system then you must see here from this figure it is looking like this this is x axis and this is y axis is it clear this is x axis and this is y axis correct now first we need to find out how much tension act induced in this rope and this is inextensible and massless rope yes or no so first we need to find out how much load or how much tension act so if i draw a free body diagram of this rope this is a rope yes or no this is a rope inextensible rope and some mass is climbing in this direction then obviously its weight is 60 kg yes or no so can I say the gravitational acceleration or gravitational weight is acting in the downward direction and since this mass is climbing with acceleration A is equal to that is 2 meter per second square and here we have a tension like this correct. So how much tension induced first we need to find out this yes or no. So can I write here with a D Lambert principle. If I apply D L Lambert principle, simply we can say the net force is nothing but this is T minus mg. 
tension which is acting in the upward direction and weight is acting in the downward direction. So, this is T minus mg and which is nothing but this is equal to acceleration uh, force due to acceleration that is ma yes or no so from this if you can write this is equal to ma plus mg yes or no and if i take a common m from the above equation then simply it can be written like this and now if you just put the value of acceleration which is 2 and if i consider 10 meter per second square is a gravitational acceleration then it will be written as 2 into 10. So, simply here we can get the tension is nothing but this is equal to T is equal to 60 into 2 plus 12 that is sorry 10 not 12. So, 60 into 12 this is 720 Newton. So, to net it or total tension acting on the rope is looking like this t is equal to 720 newton correct so ab hame yahan pe pata chal gaya ki due to climbing of this uh, main uh, net force acting on this rod is 720 newton yes or no 720 newton is it clear okay okay so now now we need to draw free body diagram then obviously you can see here and you can see so so for you you just see here this is a wall this is a wall in which we have a rod like this yes or no it is looking like this Now, if, if we see, if I draw only th these lines for the reference, correct? Instead of put, uh, drawing the whole rod and you can see the net force acting on this is nothing but this is equal to, this is equal to and obviously you have a, 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 a wire rope like this and the tension is acting like this and if you cut the section from here then simply here we can get this force yes or no and whose magnitude is 720 newton yes or no and th the length of this part is 3 meter and this is 2 meter yes or no and this is itself this is z axis this is uh, this is sorry x axis and this is y axis correct so this is our ref uh, axis system yes or no now we need to find out stress somewhere here so for this we need to shift this load on this member yes or no kyunki ye jo wall se connected part hai only this part yes or no this part of mujhe agar load pata chal jaye if we shift this load from here to here then we can easily solve this problem yes or no and the question is how to shift this load so simply if i draw its free body diagram simply if I draw its free body diagram if we draw so simply write now draw free body diagram free body diagram correct and let us say this is A B C free body diagram so we started from B C end yes or no so you can see here this is a B C end is it clear this is a bc end yes or no and simply here i am drawing parallel to this and the weight is acting somewhere here and the, obviously this load is nothing but this is acting along which axis this load is acting along x axis yes or no this load is acting along x axis how we can say x axis then you can see here this is parallel to this yes or no and this one is x axis is it clear that's why I'm saying. So you can see this is BC member and the load 720 Newton is acting like this. Yes or no? So obviously, if I see 
it is a longitudinal axis of this member is nothing but you can see here the longitudinal of this member is y, this is y axis and this is uh, z axis, yes or no? This is z axis and the, this load itself is acting along x axis. So, this load is nothing but this is transverse load for this BC member, therefore, this transverse load produces a bending moment like this, a bending moment like this and this is nothing but this is equal to and this bending moment is acting about which axis, then obviously this bending moment is acting about z axis and this is nothing but this is 720 into length of this BC member and the length of this BC member, member is 3 meter. So, simply if I multiply with this 3, then we can get moment, yes or no? Yes or no? And simply if I see, this is the direction of view, if I see from this direction, this is direction of view, simply you write direction of view, this is direction of view, correct? So, this force is trying to produce a couple in clockwise direction, yes or no? This force is producing a couple in clockwise direction and the unit is Newton meter, yes or no? And uh, about which axis it acts? About z axis, yes or no? Correct? So, this is action. So, what about reaction? So, can I say this is reactive force that is 720 Newton and similarly this is reactive moment, yes or no? Mz, this is equal to 720 into 3 Newton meter and this is acting in anti clockwise. So, this is the correct free body diagram of BC member. And now, another another member we have, you just you see here, that is a BA member, yes or no? And obviously, we need force at this end only, then we can find out stress acting on it, yes or no? So, you just shift this force and whatever load acting on it, you just shift from this point to this point and obviously these are the reactions, so here we need to shift with action, yes or no. So, simply can I write this is 20, 720 Newton and this is acting about z axis in anti clockwise direction, so sorry, anti uh, clockwise direction, so can I represent this, uh, to, uh, this moment in clockwise, yes or no and this is nothing but this is mz and whose magnitude is? and its magnitude is 720 into 3. So, simply can I write this is 2160 Newton meter, yes or no? Is that clear? So, यहाँ पे जो bending moment है, it behave like a twisting moment for AB member, yes or no? इस BC member में जो bending moment हमने calculate किया, this one, इसका nature अगर मैं लिखूँ, तो this is bending moment, तो ये जो bending moment है, it behaves like a twisting moment, for this member, for AB member, yes or no, correct? And once again you can see this 720 force which is acting along x axis and x axis for AB member is a transverse axis, therefore it will produces a bending moment, yes or no, like this and this bending moment is nothing but and obviously this bending moment is nothing but this is acting about which axis? Y axis, yes or no? And this is equal to, this is equal to 720 into 2 Newton meter, yes or no? Is it clear? And this is nothing but this is 1440 Newton meter and in counterclockwise or anticlockwise, yes or no? Correct? So, this is free body diagram. If I shift this load from here to here, then we can get a bend, twisting moment and a bending moment and a direct shear force, yes or no, correct? And after drawing this free body diagram, then obviously here we can see, here you can see here, this is the member and obviously parallel to the y axis, this is x axis, parallel to the x axis, this is y and this is itself z. Parallel to the x axis, we have this force 720 Newton, yes or no? And this is also having a, twist, uh, a bending moment that is my, which is equal to 720 into 3, sorry, 720 into 2, not 3, into 2 Newton meter, and along with this, 
this is also subjected to a twisting moment that is mz which is equal to 720 into 3 newton meter yes or no so these are the load this is a bending moment for ab member and this is twisting moment for ab member yes or no and once we get these forces and once you get these forces then simply you can say bending moment this is m y which is bending moment it will produces a bending stress that is m y over section modulus about y axis or jo jis axis ke about moment act hota hai that axis is called as that axis is called as a neutral axis yes or no so what about uh, moment of sorry section modulus so you can see this figure you can see this figure so according to this figure according to this figure you can see here this is the cross section and this is y axis so if i write section modulus for this so, so can i write moment of inertia about y axis over uh, y max yes or no and what about i y y i am writing directly here so i x x is nothing but this is pi y 64 d to the power 4 over dy 2 yes or no so section modulus about y y axis is nothing but it can be written as pi y 32 d to the power 4 yes or no and similarly if you write a polar moment of inertia then th obviously this is z by r yes or no and what about z this is pi y 32 d to the power 4 over dy 2 and when you solve this expression then you can get then you can get pi by 16 d cube yes or, yes or no this is polar moment of inertia sorry polar section modulus we need section modulus as well as polar section modulus for finding normal and shear stresses yes or no okay so now let us see okay so if i calculate bending stress so we need m y by z y yes or no so can i write m y is nothing but this is 720 720 into 2 newton meter and obviously we need to convert this newton meter into meter so simply here i am going to multiply uh, thousand so here we can get the unit of this part is newton millimeter and divided by z and what about z z is nothing but this is pi by 32 d cube and the diameter is already given that is 60 millimeter let me check okay yes 60 millimeter correct so 60 millimeter cube yes or no so now tell me what is the value of bending stress so according to my calculation you may also check that is 67.94 mega pascal is it clear this is bending stress so from m by you can get bending stress and similarly 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 due to m z we can get torsional uh, shear stress and this is nothing but it can be written as m z over pi by 16 d cube or you can say this is 16 t by pi d cube and here m z is a torque yes or no so can i write this is 16 into what about t t is given that is 720 newton into 3 meter over over pi d cube and what about d cube d cube is nothing but this is a 60 cube and when you solve this problem then after solving this expression we can get 50.955 mega pascal so from this we can get bending stress from this we can get shear stress yes or no and once you get once you get bending uh, bending and shear stresses once you get bending and shear stresses then you are able to find out then you are able to find out sorry then you are able to find out maximum stresses yes or no okay so here we have 67.94 mega pascal sigma b 67.94 mega pascal 
and tau is nothing but this is 50.955 mega pascal yes or no so if i talk about its state of stress then you can see it is looking like this instead of x simply if here we consider sigma b and the shear stresses are acting like this yes or no this is and this is tau x y which is equal to tau yes or no and parallel to this here we have sigma y which is equal to 0 and you can see this sigma b is nothing but this is acting along z axis yes or no correct so if you want to find out sigma max then obviously we know that we have this relation sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus minus and obviously here we need to find out maximum value so i am using plus sign square root of sigma x minus sigma y by 2 whole square plus tau x y square is it clear so simply if you put these values so simply can i write this is sig instead of sigma x we have sigma b which is equal to 67.94 plus y is 0 over 2 plus square root of 67.94 minus 0 by 2 whole square plus tau x y that is 50.95 whole square. So from this calculation you get sigma max and instead of positive sign if you use minus sign then you also get minimum value yes or no. So I am not interested in uh, minimum value because in the question they ask uh, how much maximum stress induced. So I am just calculating maximum normal stress as well as maximum shear stress and what about maximum shear stress? So maximum shear stress is nothing but this is square root of this is square root of This is square root of sigma x minus sigma x minus sigma y by 2 whole square plus tau x y square. So tau max is nothing but you just see here this is sigma 67.94 by minus 0 by 2 whole square plus 50.95 whole square. So after solving this, you will get the maximum shear stress, yes or no? And after solving this, you will get the maximum normal stress and the unit of these stresses is mega Pascal, correct? So like this, we can solve this problem, correct? So at the end, when you solve this question, so you can see here, here, here we follow this procedure, you can see, first we, here we have, uh, Okay, yes, so here we have this question, correct? So f in this question, first you need to find out how much tension acting on the rope because because of that total tension, the stress may induce, yes or no? So our first step, kya hai? you just write down like this, given data, find to, you and then you can also draw, it's free body diagram and after that, after that you just find out how much uh, net tension acting on the how much net tension acting on the rope, yes or no? Okay, like this. And after getting tension, after getting tension, again you need to draw its free body diagram so that you can transfer this load from C end to V end because we need to find out state, stress at the fixed end and fixed end is a part of AB section yes or no. So first we need to shift this load from this point to this point yes or no and when you shift this load from C to B then you can get a two uh, couples that is a bending couple and a twisting couple yes or no and bending couple produces bending stress and twisting couple produces twisting torsional shear stress yes or no. So after getting this, here I am going to calculate bending stress as well as shear stress, yes or no? 
and after getting maximum uh, normal and shear stresses then by uh, using this formula you can find out maximum normal stress and maximum shear stress yes or no and at the end when you solve this entire problem at the end then you just summarize you just write summary you just write summary so total tension is nothing but we get 720 newton meter yes or no this is the total tension yes or no and after that how much bending stress induced then you just write 67.9 joule whatever uh, 94 yes mega pascal and after that shear stress torsional shear stress which is 50.95 mega pascal and then sigma max you also write this sigma max and tau max yes or no correct and after writing this summary you just put these all values in the box so that it is clearly uh, visible to the examiner yes or no correct so this is the proce procedure and obviously there, there is no need to write a, any comment on it correct if further they are uh, if they ask how to design this then you can uh, you, you just say the comment yes or no so after getting this value this is the end of the solution yes or no so like this you can solve it so uh, this is the detailed complete solution of this question and which uh, it has 20 marks weightage, yes or no, correct? So, Asani sahab yaha se 20 marks yaha se grab kar sakte ho like uh, solving this question, yes or no, correct? So, now at the end, if you are planning to appear in this exam, then your PT education already uh, launches a new module on it, in which uh, along with a uh, pre-exam preparation, uh, conventional preparation is also started, yes or no, or C classes start ho chuki hai from 14th of uh, J uh, July. So, agar aapne abhi tak join nahi kiya is module ko, this is dedicated module for this exam, correct? So, if you haven't joined till now, then you just join it because it is very, very beneficial for you guys, correct? So, now I am going to end this session. Thank you for watching this session.